Today we go on an autumn walk and explore the wonderful world of mushrooms. Some mushrooms are edible and oh so tasty. Some can make you sick. Some are medicinal, healing. Some make you hallucinate. While few are straight up deadly. Like with many things in life, you learn to identify what's safe and what's not. Overall though, foraging mushrooms can be a lot of fun. It's like going on a scavenger hunt in nature. Hello darlings! Today, Mommy O and I are on a hunt for edible mushrooms. There's gonna be some non-edibles too and we'll try to identify them. I'm hoping we find chanterelles, like a whole community of them. Because when you cook mushrooms, they shrink a lot. So we're gonna need about 10 I think. But if we don't find any chanterelles, it's okay. At least we get to walk in nature, get some fresh air. And I wanna say thank you to Boksu for sponsoring this video. And now, let's go find some mushrooms! Chanterelles! While I've done my very best to accurately identify the following mushrooms, please refer to expert sources to learn more about these amazing fungi, especially before eating any wild ones. While we were walking on this trail, we saw a dead tree and there's some inky cap growing. Now if you come to the other side, there's a bunch more. These are smaller ones. When these mushrooms break down, they melt into black goo. Cool fact, inky caps were once used as writing ink. Look at this one, so jelly. It's got a neighbor. Here we have a bigger one. Ooh. Hey look, it looks like the shape of a heart. Yo, check out these mushrooms. This one, very yellow and they look so oily and so tasty. Sometimes it's tricky to identify mushrooms, but I'm pretty sure these are Foliota aravella. Next to them, there's a white cream colored mushroom. There is a huge mushroom! Orange one with white dots on it. Let's see if there's a way in closer. Oh, it's my lucky day. We encounter the Amanita muscaria the fly agaric. Cap colors range from red to orange, with shades from yellow to tan to white. That big orange one? I think I found a baby version. Here's the fly agaric before the cap has fully opened. Now the bright red variety looks familiar, doesn't it? Yup, it's the famous mushroom with its own emoji. Hello! We have a group, a bunch of small mushrooms growing. If I put my hand next to it. Does it have a gill? Yes, it has gills. It smells good, but I'm not sure what it is. Delicious the smell. Yeah, it smells delicious. <laughs> Let's just take one sample. We're gonna take it home and identify it because sometimes it could take a while to go through the book. And next to this colony, it looks like baby inky caps on the side. Could this be an artist conch in the making? It's got light brown outer bands and gray inner bands. Perhaps it'll grow into something like this. I want to say that's like an oyster or angel wings. I'm not sure what it is. I need to see like bigger full-grown mushrooms for me to better tell what it is. You know, I'd like to come back in a few days. It's going to be raining again this coming week. So it should be interesting to see how much they grow. Or are they deteriorating already? I'm not sure. Oh, over there, it looks like they're still growing. They still look pretty fresh. Oh, there's some more down there. Yeah, they love the shade. Oh, wow. Oh, look under the whole thing. Whoa, I can only see it because I'm putting the camera down. It's hard for me to go down all the way and see it. But the camera can go down lower. Wow. I'm starting to get a little hungry, so let's snack. We brought our Boksu box with us. Thanks again to Boksu for sponsoring this video. Do you know about Boksu? Boksu is a monthly snack box subscription service that delivers original assortments of premium Japanese snacks and tea pairings. Every month, you'll get a box with a different theme, and the snacks will always be different. It's a gourmet journey through Japan every month. Whee! What's this month's theme? Autumn Harvest! Oh, they're all in Japanese. So thankfully, we have the culture guidebook right here and it'll tell us what is what. Let's try three to four snacks. We'll do some snacking right now and then more later. Since we're on a mushroom hunt, 
Let's try the shiitake one first. It smells mushroomy and peppery. Woo! All right, let's take a bite. There's a spiciness that lingers in your mouth. It's almost like a very cute bonfire. Oh, look at this! Cubed yam! Imokari cube. No common allergens. And it's vegetarian. Very firm crunchy. If you're a kid with a wobbly tooth that needs to come out, I just have a piece of this and it'll whoop, mm. pop right out. <laughs> it's sweet and fried. It's my kind of snack. The same color as your jacket, the packaging. Ooh, look at that. This one's the Bancho Mini Chocolate Ano Imo Sweet Potato. Do, 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 do. Once again, it matches your jacket color. <laughs> Ooh. Ooh, wow, look at wow. that. Almost looks like sandwich and yeah, that's like that's cheese or I'm something. Going to do. Cheers, goodbye. That's the sound it makes when you bite into it. And the inside yellow part mm. is sweet potato and chocolate mix. You guys, there is still so much to try. Oh, look at this. This also matches your jacket color. <laughs> you guys want to try the Boksu box? Click the link in the description box and use my code to get 10% off your own Boksu box and save up to $44. The rest of the snacks will try at home and you'll see that review later in this video. Now let's finish this trail and see what other mushrooms we'll encounter. So I'm looking for little spots of yellow for the chanterelle. Because it is autumn, we have a lot of yellow fallen leaves. So it's a little bit tricky to spot the yellow chanterelle. You know, because it starts camouflaging amongst the leaves. Mamio pointed out some mushrooms over here at the base of this tree. So these guys, it looks like they have gills on the bottom. Mm, it smells like the one we picked earlier. That one also smells delicious. The first one we picked was yellow, and it kind of gradates to a lighter yellow. And the next one we picked is brown. So we'll fully identify that later. So while you should not eat any mushroom unless you're absolutely certain that it's edible, I am told though it's safe to touch any mushroom. Um, but this one, anything that's like too spotty, it makes me a little bit nervous to touch. <laughs> if you look at the bottom of this guy, it has no gills. Seeing that the interior is white, I'm thinking these are young Apia Perdon Pyriform, the pear-shaped puffball. Puffballs get their name because they puff out spores upon impact, or when their mature body bursts. There's... Ooh! I didn't know squirrels make that sound. Don't worry, little guy, we're not gonna hurt you. Okay, we found the biggest shelf mushroom of the day. It got some leaves stuck on there on the top. Let me see if I can get closer to it. If I put my hand on it, it's bigger than my hand. Baby chimank bed. <laughs> <laughs> oh, it's so cute. Oh, I love how they bounce. Oh, this one doesn't bounce much, but this guy. Doink. I think this is the ones we came across before, the same species. And next to it, we got a different species of mushroom. The one over here, this guy, he's seen better days. What I learned from my first mushroom foraging experience is you might look at one perspective of a log, but you might not see anything. So you have to go to the other side or walk around it, you know? Just like with people, you might see only one side of their personality, but then the more you spend time with them, you see different facets, right? Different sides. So same thing with mushroom hunting. Sometimes you just gotta take a different perspective and look from, look from a different angle. Now this same tree we're looking at, see, I found some more baby mushrooms on the side. So we just saw these guys. Now turn around, there's some more. Wow, look at this. Oh. <laughs> Whoa, look at, from bottom to top. These really dark ones, they used to be mushrooms, a lot of them, but you know, they're like corpse mushrooms now. Soft. Hmm, is it oyster? A type of oyster mushroom? Look at the base of that tree! Lots of mushrooms! Wow! So many! And we got some slugs here. We've got a black slug munching on this tree. I believe this is the Pacific banana slug. And another guy over here on the side munching away. 
So unfortunately, we didn't see any chanterelle. Maybe they were there, but we just didn't notice them. Um, but it's okay. We got to see a lot of other kinds of mushroom species and I always wanted to see that yellow jelly looking one and I got to touch it. So that was probably one of the highlights of this mushroom hunting. It's been a couple days and we're back on the same area we looked at the mushrooms last time and already the minute we got on this trail, we saw some big mushrooms, a bunch of them. Remember those white inky caps and some of them were babies? Well, look at this. Within days, it became full grown and now it's turning into black goo. And these guys turned into this. Look at how much these guys have grown. Some parts have deteriorated. Now the fly amanita, I think it was here last time. Oh look, it's over there. Very decomposed. Oh, oh, look at that. The one that was a baby. Look how much it grew! Remember this guy? He's all grown up now. The white spots were washed away by the rain. Mamiyo said it's Smurf's table. If you're a fairy, that could be like an umbrella or a place for shelter. Guess what? Over there, we have another baby. In a couple days, it's gonna become an umbrella. Lots of baby mushrooms here. I believe this is sulfur tuft. We found some more witch's butter. They say it's edible but not much flavor. Oh, so many mushrooms! <gasps> wow! Last time we saw a village of mushrooms like that, they were small, so it's easy to just pass by and not notice them, but this time it's like in your face. You're like, boom, you cannot miss it. These small mushrooms became this. Wow! This is the one where there were three slugs nearby. Wow! Oh, there's still a slug right here. Now if you're a dog or a cat, the view is even more epic from a lower eye level. So these are the puffballs. Let's see if it releases. Some of these guys already burst open and release spores. This one is still intact. We're looking for that fallen log that had the angel wings or it was the oyster mushrooms. I want to see a bigger version of those. Is this the log we were looking at the other day? I think this might be that log. We have white ones over there. Those look fresh. I just don't remember a plant like this next to the log we saw the other day. You know what? I think this is the log. Yeah, this looks, this feels familiar, but it, the tree broke down. So now, yeah, I mean, here you see those um, little mushrooms. Yeah, this is where I had put my camera down to see all those small mushrooms. Yup, this was the log. We found it. Oh, and this guy grew a little bit. This one right here. Mushrooms, they come and go so fast. And with these fallen logs, and as they deteriorate, it's a changing landscape. And in a matter of days, uh, it's, it could be tricky to figure out where you saw that mushroom last time, you know? Found a bunch of mushrooms over here, and here's a nice round big one. I was trying to use a knife, but I ended up picking up this guy on the bottom. Wow, look at those gills. How beautiful is that? We're going to take this home and take some time to identify it. I later identified this as Heterobasidian anosum. This fungus is one of the major root pathogens in North American conifers. In other words, it causes disease in certain tree species. Very hard. So over there, I believe that's either turkey tail or false turkey tail. If it's turkey tail, it's medicinal. Turkey tail mushrooms also grow in shades of blue and green, and they sure do resemble turkey tails. We got some more polypores here. And down here, I believe this is the varnish conch. On our walk back to the car, we are gonna say goodbye to the fly amanita, the amanita muscaria. Now I am tempted to take it home. However, there's only a handful of them. Maybe they are more growing under the leaves, but um, you know, it's also by the trail. It's fun for people to look at when they walk by. So the one mushroom I picked up today, there was a lot of those guys, so I just picked up one. Um, that guy, Fly Amanita, I'm gonna leave it alone. Mommy, I just pointed out, there's another full-grown Fly Amanita. It's kept its spots. You have two polypores. One on top of the other. Here's the underside. 
There is a bunch more scattered on this fallen log. Mommy just pointed out there's mushroom growing on the staircase. No. Right? <laughs> Last year, mommy will cut it off and they're regrowing. I'd like to preserve this mushroom and use it for crafts. I have a paper clip. I'm going to straighten it. In the best case situation, I'd have something even thinner and just shoot it right up the mushroom. Hopefully it doesn't pop up from the side. We're gonna stick it on this styrofoam. This came with our furniture. I saved up a bunch of the packaging that came with the furniture just in case I'd use it for something like this. Unexpected repurposing. All right, and we'll just let it dry like that for a couple days and it'll stay straight. It is such a handsome mushroom. So cute. So cute and round. It really is like a mini umbrella. In our pajamas, on to the snacking sequel. <laughs> Which three snacks shall we try next? Oh, is this uni crackers? Potato chips. It's like a star with 20 points. I like to try financier. To learn a little bit more about this snack, let's look inside the culture guidebook. It smells so good. Wow, well, it's pretty firm. <laughs> smells like caffeine. <laughs> I smell soybean powder. It's a sophisticated sweet, and the imagery it paints in my head, foggy day, by the window, drinking tea, and seeing steam. Next up, let's try the uni rice crackers. It's concave, the bottom looks quite toasty, and the top, it has a lot more texture, bumpy-ish. Umami. Mm -hmm. It's a very likable flavor. I smell a little bit of uni at the end. In this month's box, I'm noticing there's a lot of sweetness, so that is a very nice contrasting balance. Let's try one more snack. How about the smile crackers? Let's look up the information on this one. White sesame seeds are baked into each biscuit. There's four pieces. Two for you, two for me. And you get those crystals of sugar on the top. Just like the illustration on the front, it makes you go... <sighs> <laughs> this one is not just a sweet, it's a little bit um, nutty because of the sesame. Mm -hmm. It's like a silhouette of a flower with many petals, like chrysanthemum. Yeah. So we have one, two, three, four, five, six snacks left. Let's try one more. I'd like to try this. This one, what's the info on it? So this one's from Tokyo. Sour and sweet, and it's very refreshing. It's like grape juice. Yeah, but most of all, I like the sourness of it. We're gonna save the rest of the snacks for another day. Gotta space it out, space out that joy. If you guys are interested in getting your own box of boksu, remember to check the link in the description box. Happy snacking everyone! Yay! <laughs> remember to subscribe and hit that notification bell. For food and travel in Korea, check out my other channel, Sweet and Tasty TV. Toodles, my noodles! The past week, it's been raining a lot, and today there's a break between the rain, and starting tomorrow up until next Thursday, it's gonna keep raining. So today was the opportunity to come out and look for the mushrooms. Now here's a species we've seen for the first time today. Looks glossy on the top, huh? I think it's getting old. Here's how big they are compared to the size of my hand. Do they have gills? Got some mushrooms over here. They look quite shredded. Beep, 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 beep. Beep, beep, beep. Beep 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 beep. Beep beep beep. <laughs> you need to have some extra eyes on your face because you gotta look on the sides for the mushrooms and you have to look on the ground, watch your step. There are some times I got walked in some muddy areas because I was like so focused on the sides. Wow, they are a beauty. There are a bunch more on the other side. 
Oh, this area looks interesting. It does get a little bit muddy, but I think we could just hop on over on this side. Ooh, watch out. Lots of mud over here, Mom. That's doable. Ooh, it does get a little slippery. Check it out. Look at this. Ooh, there's a little frog that just jumped in. I didn't see it, but I heard it. So Mommy O just pointed out there is a whole village of smaller mushrooms right over there. Do you see those little circles? Yeah, those little dots, those are the mushrooms. Hey, another mushroom under it. I've been hiking many, many times, but I never was on the lookout for mushrooms, right? But now that I'm looking for mushrooms, I'm seeing them. So I'm wondering, all the other times I went hiking, what kind of mushrooms? Did I not see? So when you are focused on something, you're gonna look for that and then you're gonna see it, right? Whatever you focus on, you're gonna see more of that. Before, like when we first got to Washington, we would see all this amazing evergreen trees and moss and I would just focus on moss. But now, I'm just like mushroom, mushroom, looking for yellow patches. Oh, and the bottom of these, Thanks again to Boksu for sponsoring this video. Wink wink. 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 <laughs>